I show this slide first thing because a hemp bud is an awful lot different in its appearance than a marijuana bud. And I have never grown marijuana. I don't deal with marijuana. I have nothing to do with it, but I have seen it. I've been in, in, in plantations in Washington and Oregon and seen some of this. It's a very open bud. It's not tight, it's airy, and if you look very closely, you may be able to see a few sparkly little crystals there, but that's right on the surface, and that's some of the oil we're looking for, for CBD. So I'm going to tell you where I'm going to take this uh, few minutes I have here. I want to talk about the regulatory environment for hemp CBD. I want to talk about the background of the hemp material that I have in my own company, CBD Baker, Inc. I want to talk about a 2014 Eastern Canadian variety trial. It'll come up down later in the presentation, and we'll look at CBD levels of about, I think, 12 varieties. I want to talk about the Parkland hemp breeding program. And Parkland has had some, some Manitoba government support to take this forward, and I'm very proud of the fact that the Manitoba government supported this. That's pretty neat, really. And I want to talk about the factors affecting CBD breeding, the, bre the breeding process. And finally, the impact of hemp leaf prohibition. Because it's really a tragedy for us when we have an ocean of CBD. So on the regulatory environment, I, I just want to mention that we are in an international tug of war in this space. We have companies like GW Pharma, I believe they own it. And we have the natural health product people in America think they also have a full and complete right to be in this space. So there's, on, the, on the natural health product side, there's traditional use. I encourage you to look up eclectic medicine. That's, uh, they, these were in contrast to our allopathic system. Our previous presentation was allopathic medicine approach. And we, we love it and we need it. But there, were, there was other approaches to medicine than our present allopathic system. Eclectic medicine used cannabis and they used hemp extensively. So we got a traditional use, we got the eclectic use, and we believe that extracts could well be the way. And uh, we, we can grow material that has high, high levels of CBD and low levels of THC. And I believe this is in the, probably the public's best interest. It might even be a positive impact on our healthcare system. We buy it if we need it. And if we, you know, we, it's not prescribed. It doesn't hurt our healthcare system. On the other side is the pharmaceutical, the modern clinical approach. And by the way, your presentation was fantastic. I just love it, and I, I really appreciate it. Um, pure isolated compounds. And uh, it tends to be more marijuana-based, um, and sometimes as high as 50-50 percent CBD, THC, and it's in the big pharma's best interest. Okay, I'll keep going here. So Canadian hemp growers, and if you don't know this, we can't harvest leaf. It's, it's against the regulatory process we have in the industrial hemp regulations. On the other hand, I work with people in the U.S., and they can harvest seed, and they can harvest biomass for fiber, they also can harvest the leaf or the bud material and they can extract the CBD out of that. My position is, and I think I want to make it very clear as I enter this, it's a huge, it has a huge medical history that predates our, ma our modern system. Medical marijuana in today's, for the, say, say for the last 50 years, is primarily recreational. I know we call it medical marijuana, but it's, I bet you 80% of the market, maybe more, is recreational. In contrast, uh, cannabidiol sourced from hemp is non-recreational. It is really medical. So we can produce hemp extracts, 25 to 1 ratio of CBD to THC, and it represents a natural health product category almost perfectly. And we need to be thinking in those terms. Our healthcare system can benefit from uh, hemp OTC products. Uh, the Canadian hemp sector, and I mean this, and I say that very passionately, the Canadian health 
care or the Canadian hemp sector deserves and has earned this, this opportunity. We have been responsible in all our reg regulatory compliance and we haven't been fooling around growing stuff on the side and sneaking it off to the market. And uh, we deserve this opportunity. We don't come from a history of criminal backgrounds and we need to push hard on this envelope. That's my position. Um, I, I, again, I loved your presentation and what got me really interested in, in, in CBD was it has this incredible list of multiple modes of action. And this is from some work that was done, I believe, down in Brazil. I'm not going to focus much on, on the medical side other than this one slide. And I'm going to leave it, at, leave it at that. But it just tweaked my interest. I said, we have to look at this. Look at, the, look at the multiple modes of action of one particular compound. And this will be, this I hopefully will be on the website. You can pick all this information up. The history to where I am coming from is, in the War of 1812, the British Navy needed rope and sailcloth, especially on the Great Lakes. And they shipped from 1801 to 1823, there was multiple shipments of hemp into what we call present-day Ontario. Well, I found some of those remaining stocks. In a few isolated spots, I found 25 sites. Most of them are gone now. I don't think I went, to, went back to one last year, and I found it. But most of them are gone. But I happened to get about four strains out of that material that I was using for breeding fiber hemp. And I had no idea that it had CBD in it. So. Um, I call it those Upper Canada strains, UPC, U, uh, UCP, uh, UCRGM, and UCB, and those other two are named varieties out of these Upper Canada strains. But we found that if we look at this material, I started in 2005 measuring this, and it was a crazy little article in Herbergram that caught my interest. Herbergram. <laughs> it's a great um, magazine. And uh, so in 2005, I started looking at it, and I'm just going to go quickly through some slides now. You're seeing we have levels at seed set. That's normally when we start to gather our samples for THC testing. And it's not going to show up then. It's too early. But if we wait till actual seed harvest, you have a significant increase in the CBD levels. 2006, I started, my interest started to peak even more. We have now this Victoria strain that I've been working on. It's coming in at 4%. That's at seed harvest. And then I got thinking, what if we went further? What if we, what if we didn't take the seed and let the seed fall and we just wait another couple of weeks? What happens? And it will, will go up and I'll show you more information later. But then I also wanted to know what is happening with our other varieties we're growing for commercial production of hemp in Canada. So here we have Alyssa, and that's a parkland variety. I, I'd have to say don't waste your time looking for CBD in Alyssa. You won't find much there at all. Anka would fall in the same class. Um, US 014, that's an old one, isn't it? Um, it's not worth looking at for uh, CBD production. There's a variety of Patera that Parkland have, and it might have a little bit. But there's an interesting trend is don't waste your time looking for CBD in Monetius varieties because they're half male. So I went on and looked at 2008. I put a major trial out in 2008 of, of again, the, both the uh, 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 Upper Canada strains and the non-Upper Canada strains. And I'm back, and I finally got to the point where I said, after that particular year, Georgina and Victoria are the two lines that I have to focus my attention on. I have limited resources. I'm just a small independent breeder. I'm not financed by universities or government. This is all done privately. So Georgina and Victoria are now on the list of approved cultivars for Canada, but there are also pretty significant levels of CBD. And I wanted to also see if 
this, uh, these as varieties if they were stable? Is, is, it, is this compound, is the chemistry stable in the plant? So I took four separate rows in a field, and I went in and I took um, samples to see what happened. And about 30 heads made a composite representation of, from each row. And you can see there that the levels uh, are pretty consistent row to row. And uh, you're averaging uh, about 4.66% CBD with a standard deviation of a half a percent. I think that's pretty remarkable. Now you're looking at materials straight out of the War of 1812, non-genetically modified, fits into our hemp philosophy perfectly. Eastern Canadian variety trial I did in the Sterling area in 2014. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this other than to say, we've, again, I'm highlighted in red, the two varieties that are coming up the best I have in my portfolio of material, and that is Georgina and Victoria. There's another one in there, Quida, number nine. It is a different cat. That's one of Parkland's varieties we hope to register in the next year. It doesn't look as, it does not look as high in CBD, but if you look over on the very far uh, right-hand side, it produces an awful lot more bud. So in, not, in the number of pounds or kilograms of material per acre or per hectare will we'll probably be about not far, much different than of, on, on a, some of my own material. So if you have some of these varieties, you can start to see where, and you probably monitor, started to monitor the last year or so anyways. So I want to take, take a look at uh, prospecting within these varieties. <coughs> So uh, in 2015, uh, I put out a Georgia, Georgina plantation, and I harvested it at 110 days, and it normally would go to 120. And remember, it goes up as time goes on, so we're not getting to the optimal amount. So three point, on the breeder plot, N was I had 20 individual, or sorry, 20 samples out of that plot to get a, three, a, a mean of 3.7% CBD THC 0.14, and the CBD ratio was 27 to 1. And that's becoming more and more interesting to me as a ratio. And then I went in and I prospected a whole bunch of plants. I think I took somewhere around 30 plants, individuals, out of that plantation. And I said, there's got to be some outliers there that I can probably take forward. And that's how I do a lot of the breeding work. And if you're a grower, you need to understand how this stuff takes time. And uh, so we found that we are uh, we're got material in the 5% range. And it looks very promising that we can create, bring this, this le these levels of CBD up. But the most exciting piece on that particular slide to me is I had one with a 62 to 1 ratio of CBD to THC. And I was so excited, I put out a nice block of that. And I look at it this year, and I don't find it. <laughs> so I have to go back, and I have to drill into that number 20 at the bottom. I have to re-drill into that particular line to find it again and, and pull it back out of there. It's there. I just got to pull it out. I still have original seed, too. And Georgina looks like it's gone down from... Uh, I'll just go back up one slide. It goes down from 110 days, 3 point, let's say 3.7 there. At 100 days, it's 2.0. And, and because I, I had to take all my seed in Ontario early this year, probably 10 or 20 days early, uh, we had such an, a terrible drought, level 4 drought in Ontario. We've never had it before. And all the wildlife was, was, uh, was getting my hemp. And if I didn't get get it, they were going to get it all, so I had to take it early. So I'm not discouraged with these results. I'm actually very encouraged because I took it at 100 days. But I wanted you to see that it's not, it's not simple. Breeding for CBD is a slow process to bring it up. And I, 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 know, we're, I know we're making progress. 
I get all the right direction here. Victoria, it's the same kind of thing. It normally has to go at least 120 days. So in 2015, I took it 110, 4.1. I pulled out some single plant selections in the five range, and I'm pretty excited about that. And it came through in 2016. It came through in those. And I also have some rogues I pulled out. When I'm doing breeder plots, I, if I find something that I think is a little off type, I rogue it out of there. I get it out of the plantations. And I said, but I, when I pulled those rogues, I could feel, they're female plants, I could feel how sticky they were. I says, I'm going to just check these guys out. 6.1, 6.38. And uh, THC is getting pretty darn close to the line. So that concerns me. We'll, we'll drill into it and bring the THC down. Uh, parkland. Parkland have, have also, and I, again, we'll spend just a few minutes on this. What I like about the, the parkland material is we've been able to get it into up into the 5% range. Even I think last year there was maybe, no, not, not in 2015, I think we had some even higher than that. Um, low THC, um, that's the, uh, the P hyphen X. Now, we, I'm just using that as a code name because we are going to properly name it, hopefully, in the next year. But we have the ability here in Canada, and we have the genetics. We don't have to go to Europe. We have it right here in the Parkland stable, in my CBD Baker stable. We have it here to go forward with. We don't need to go there. There's another variety, Quida. I mentioned it earlier, four, but I took... I took it, had it again, I had to take some of these samples very early. You don't have this problem out here, but I have a flock of 50 wild turkeys live behind my barn, and they're into my hemp all the time. So I have a real problem with wild turkeys. Uh, I did some more work here on, on some of this other material. You can see it here. There's. Uh, Alyssa, it's, it's as it was before, less than one, uh, about 1% 1 CBD. Debbie was about the same. Kanda was 1%. Judy, Judy is a new dioecious strain that Parkland's bringing out. No, am I right about that, Keith? Not, yeah, okay, it's coming out. And it's gonna be very interesting. It's a little higher in CBD. I don't know why I don't have that here. Yeah, here we are. Um, there's two other, two other things I added this morning that I thought I would be helpful for other people here. There's a variety that uh, um, called Canma, and it's coming in at about 1.3% uh, CBD in the sample I tested. And then there's Fenola at about 2.1. And it probably has a lot of other factors. I've got to keep going here. Information I hope you can take home and re realize that not all hemp produces great amounts of CBD. So it may not be an ocean, but it might be a lake, <laughs> a lake of CBD. In summary, uh, we have a several years of results from strip plots where all varieties were grown at the same site under the same conditions. Um, recent EU importations of genetics tend to be uh, Low in THC and low in CBD. The Upper Canada material and some of the new developments in Parkland, I think we're going to be able to, certainly within the next year or two, uh, have anywhere from 25 to 4 4 5% 5 CBD. My target is I think we can hit 6 to 7.5% CBD in the next uh, three years and have still low uh, uh, THC. It's very slow, meticulous work. And one of the problems I have is I cannot find, I don't know how to identify my best males. If I could figure out how to identify a good male, I could move this f three times faster. But I haven't figured that out yet. Now we're working on that, but that's my problem. Okay, so hemp CBD, breeder considerations, and there's other breeders in the room, and I just want to mention you. Uh, uh, at noon today, all the CSGA plant breeders meet in that very far corner there 
We're going to slip away to another room and have a short talk. Any breeders and associate breeders. So the considerations, it's, the, you, it's first of all, it's the chemistry. You've got to have good chemistry base if you're going to be in this space. You've got to have uh, low THC. You've got to have CBD at least at 3% to start, start off with. You may be able to move it up. I mean, I'm in the 4 and we're into 5% range now. Uh, we should do full cannabinoid screening. And I'm doing CBG, CB, and a whole range of stuff now. Um, we're screening for phenolics. Uh, we're not doing that here, but I'm doing it in the U.S. Uh, we're looking at plant architecture. Some of the medical marijuana strains that are being grown in fields for CBD production are being totally decimated by disease. Because they were, they were developed in arid, say, California-type conditions, you bring them back into the field production, and disease just devastates them. We have not seen any issues with this material. Doesn't mean it won't happen, and I'm just saying watch for tolerance levels. Uh, we, we, we don't want to say resistance till we've done an awful lot more work and we got a good pathologist on it. I believe it has a lot to do with plant architecture. Hemp grows tall, it's open, it's airy, and those buds dry out like by 10 o'clock in the morning. If you have a Christmas tree type plant like the marijuana stuff I've seen, it doesn't dry out till 2 o'clock in the afternoon probably. So it's a perfect environment to keep disease going. So those are things as breeders. We've got to watch our architecture. We need to be monitoring disease. And you can manage this too. So planting dates have a big impact. Stress has a big impact. Sexual expression has a big impact on some of this stuff. Harvest maturity. Make sure you take it as far as you can. And I watched those machine harvest guys yesterday, and I think it's incredible what, you, what you're doing in Europe. Where are you, where are you fellas? Are you here, still here Over with here. us? Over here? Mark. So I think it's incredible what you're doing. Uh, but if you take the tops off too soon, I don't know how you'll get any CBD in it. It's just questions like that. So harvest method is important. Drying technology is really, really, really important. Storage conditions and extraction. So a couple, couple other pictures and then we'll go. Oh, I can't stop yet. What's the impact? Uh, the impact is uh, we got 200-year-old Canadian heritage genetics, and I can't use them in Canada. I can't commercialize it. Canadians cannot even access CBD as a natural health pro product from heritage Canadian genetics. How stupid is that? Uh, and I can tell you, I've licensed this material into the U.S. market. And we're talking hundreds of acres last year. And we're having great success down there. And we can't even do it here. I did all my work here to create jobs here, to create wealth here. We can't do it here. And I can't wait any longer. And I feel very bad about that. So we've lost innovation, we've lost jobs, we've lost wealth, we've lost wellness opportunities, and probably some affordable health care options. And this has got to change. Uh, that's one of the fields in 2015. It's running about, I guess it's running about 10, 10 feet high. That was on topped hemp. Uh, and it, was, it came off at about 4.5% CBD in Kentucky. That's another field we topped this year. And it <coughs> produced, and we talked about that, it produces, it makes the, the top spread out. And that was in a 20, another 25 acre field there this year. And it is absolutely spectacular. Heritage Canadian genetics for CBD production, we're doing it in the US, and we can't do it here. It's wrong. So Upper Canada Canadi uh, Genetics will provide a unique biomedical platform, and it'll probably happen first in the U.S., and that's tragic. Thank you.
Good morning. My name is Jan Slaski. I'm coming from uh, Vegerville, Alberta, uh, a company that is called uh, right now as of uh, um, what, November 1st, Innotech Alberta, used to be known as Alberta Innovates Technology Futures Alberta Research Council. Uh, different names, same quality of research. Uh, so uh, today I will be talking about, uh, I will share um, results of two projects that uh, uh, we uh, concluded or about to conclude uh, this year. And as uh, Kim said, it, uh, I'm sharing this with you because of uh, uh, what John is doing, because of uh, interest of uh, you know, membership in this uh, uh, compound or compounds. So, uh, um, one note, yesterday when we are just like uh, comparing our presentations with John, we didn't know uh, uh, what to expe uh, expect from each other. And it was really, really amazing. So what I'm going to share with you, it will be pretty much confirming uh, um, results, data, information that John found in Eastern Canada. So we are proud to, uh, um, you know, to, uh, to, con to draw similar or same conclusions from, from Eastern Canada. And uh, some of this information, I know that, uh, you know, just like uh, uh, some of you guys in this room have, uh, well, just like uh, you know about uh, CBD, uh, and you have some of this information. As I said, I work for government organization, so I will be sharing information with the, uh, with the membership, with the audience, right? So I know that some of you possess and treasure this information. Here I am, I am just like, I don't have financial stake in, uh, you know, just in, in this, uh, keeping this information for myself, so that's why I'm sharing with you. And I will prove your point, Steve, and I'm just really amazed and, that a medical doctor coined a term that is, been, is going to be used by, uh, by the farmers. So that's, that's kudos to you, this ocean. I'm talking about this ocean. And I will prove that uh, uh, John is saying about lake. I, I would say that, yes, uh, uh, some of uh, uh, um, our data that I will be uh, showing towards uh, uh, the end of my presentation, yes, we do have an ocean. Yes, indeed. Okay, so as I said, two, present, uh, two projects quickly. And I want to acknowledge my uh, co-authors, uh, uh, Jian Yang and Susie Lee. Uh, Susie Lee uh, is a biochemist and uh, who uh, uh, mm, <clears throat> runs, this word is forbidden, Health Canada uh, accredited laboratory. So uh, we have, uh, we are testing towards uh, all suit, uh, uh, suite of uh, mm, uh, cannabinoids, all our materials that we are uh, growing in, in, in Vegreville and beyond. Okay, so the first project uh, I want to talk about impacts of uh, environmental factors on uh, CBD content in industrial hemp. And John alluded to a uh, few uh, or to impacts of, of uh, environmental factors. And we all know that when you know, plants, uh, plants are stressed out, we are getting more THC, so we are having problems with uh, uh, you know, just like uh, meeting these uh, uh, um, uh, thresholds. So we are using this first project that was run in a contr under controlled environment conditions. We're using industrial hemp as a model plant. Because why? Because money, uh, 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 or this project was sponsored by Alberta Greenhouse Growers Association, and they wanted to uh, op optimize uh, uh, procedures for growing marijuana for uh, uh, THC and uh, for CBD. So. Uh, Again, all what the data I will be presenting here in the, the, the first project are uh, on industrial hemp. So uh, we uh, took into consideration uh, three industrial hemp varieties. Why CFX2, why Fenola, why uh, X59? Because these varieties are the most popular uh, acreage-wise in, in Alberta. So we were not, again, we are not uh, discriminate. We didn't discriminate against, against uh, uh, other varieties. Just simply, we went after what is, uh, uh, you know, just like a most popular in Alberta. So uh, we tested different density, uh, low and high density. And, and uh, John's slide on the second last slide, he was showing, uh, you know, just like a high. Uh, it was in Kentucky, right? So you're just like a, they are growing uh, uh, hemp, what, 40 inches apart? Tobacco spacing. 
Yes. So we, we, uh, we tested happen, and we, have, we didn't know about each other. Uh, well, we knew about each other, but our research. So that's what I'm saying. When we're comparing data, wow. So what you're hearing from me and from John is, is real. That's what I'm trying to say. So low and high density. Uh, light conditions, again, uh, um, trials run under uh, controlled environment, so we're uh, uh, modifying photo period, uh, 18 uh, um, hours of daylight uh, over uh, duration of vegetation, uh, 70 days, and uh, the other treatment was after 21 and 30 day, uh, 31 days after seeding, we switched to uh, uh, 12 hours uh, uh, daylight and uh, increased uh, uh, um, night or just like a um, uh, dark period. Fertility, uh, the other var uh, variable was fertility. Uh, we're trying to uh, uh, work with potassium and the ratio of nitrogen to potassium. And uh, we um, attempted to uh, um, evaluate uh, in this uh, uh, growth cabinets uh, drought conditions, effects of drought conditions. So uh, quickly, a varietal screening. Uh, we took this, as I mentioned, the three most popular uh, Alberta-grown uh, uh, varieties, and we found that they differ, of course, in, in height. Surprisingly, uh, uh, X59 in this, this uh, particular uh, growth chamber trials came at the shortest one. Uh, you know, it's like a level of CBD uh, was uh, not the highest. The highest was CFX2. And uh, look at the, the range. Uh, we are talking between 1.6 to 1.9 uh, percent of uh, THC. Uh, mm, uh, dry uh, weight of ba uh, the buds was uh, the highest in CFX2. However, uh, only because we're uh, gr growing uh, the, these varieties, in enclosures, we uh, elected to, uh, uh, to, uh, to grow uh, or to experiment with uh, CF, uh, um, X59 in our uh, 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 next experiments because it was the shortest compacted branches and internodes, so it was the most suitable for, uh, for um, environmental um, uh, control environment production. Okay, so uh, the other data will be uh, showing uh, um, um, X59. Stand density. Uh, we found that uh, uh, in just like a lower stand density, and this is in, uh, uh, in tune with what John was talking about, uh, in, in increases, uh, uh, first of all, uh, uh, bad uh, um, dry weight, and increases uh, um, levels of uh, CBD. Hence, if you uh, take into consideration these two factors, uh, uh, you're getting higher uh, yield of uh, CBD per unit area. So we are also trying to trim uh, uh, um, uh, leader uh, and uh, check out if we, uh, and this, this uh, low density, if we are able to generate uh, uh, more bats, secondary bats, uh, that uh, it didn't happen in, the, uh, in, in our hands. So uh, remember, lower uh, density, uh, results in higher uh, uh, body yield in, and, in, and in hi uh, higher CBD uh, levels in X59, as I said, which is in tune with what John was talking about before. Light conditions. Of course, when we, uh, uh, when we run this uh, uh, constantly 18 hours of daylight, uh, we had uh, very few buds. Uh, we didn't bother to... Uh, uh, um, plants simply didn't uh, uh, have a chance to get to... Uh, uh, a generative stage, uh, we, uh, levels of CBD and THC uh, we, uh, were uh, negligible. So, however, when we switched uh, after, as I said, 21 and 31 days after, uh, after seeding, we, we got an uh, uh, increase of, uh, of course, uh, uh, shorter plants, uh, higher level, um, higher uh, yield of buds, and higher uh, CBD level uh, ex exceeding uh, 2%. And uh, this uh, change of light conditions or photo period is critical because uh, uh, in this, uh, uh, 21, I'm not sh uh, showing this 21 day uh, um, data, but the uh, uh, results, uh, both CBD levels and but uh, uh, yields were much lower. So here is not mm, our uh, uh, research, but uh, I, I couldn't resist to share this with you. Uh, it came up. Uh, came out uh, just like a three, uh, two or three weeks ago, uh, data from Wachningen, uh, and they were testing uh, different LED lighting, 
uh, and they concluded that it stimulates uh, cannabinoids production. They tested two varieties under different light sources, and you can get you know just um, 78 or so percent more uh, um, CBD uh, under uh, this new source of lighting. So uh, lighting. So so. Uh, 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 keep in mind that uh, photo period and light source affects, uh, modulates uh, CBD levels. And I bet that uh, you know, marijuana growers are uh, pretty much aware of that. However, these data that we are generating, these environmental factors on industrial hemp, they will be used uh, in, uh, uh, in next season in, uh, to test the uh, different effects of different environmental parameters, uh, including uh, fertility, in field. Speaking about fertility, uh, as I said, uh, we uh, uh, run uh, regular uh, potassium levels uh, uh, during vegetative and generative stage, and we modified, increased the bump dump uh, uh, potassium um, levels at the generate, uh, um, generative stage. And what we found, we found a trend. So the uh, uh, higher, higher uh, uh, this, um, modified increased uh, potassium levels uh, 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 resulted in higher uh, yield of buds. Uh, there is a trend in CBD. In uh, uh, CBD uh, also was increased. We, we couldn't find uh, significant uh, differences at this point of time. And as I said, uh, these data uh, uh, encourage us uh, to do a uh, fertility studies, and indeed we are running agronomy, different uh, fertility uh, trials in, at three sites uh, in Alberta. So next, uh, next year I hope I will be able to report uh, field uh, data of, on uh, environmental factors, including fertility, on CBD uh, levels. Uh, this is really interesting because we found that the bad position uh, on the plant, uh, you know, just affects uh, CBD uh, level. And this uh, um, position is uh, different in different uh, varieties. So for example, in X59, and we, we sample, as you can see in here, bottom, middle, and, and, and uh, top buds, and uh, uh, you know, just like I tested the uh, CBD and uh, uh, THC uh, levels. So you can, you can see that uh, in X59, which is the, the, the first three columns, uh, uh, we are getting the top bats contain the highest level of CBD. However, in Finola and X15, uh, in, uh, CFX2, lower branches had uh, uh, more CBD so, uh, than, than the, uh, the top ones. So this is, this is uh, really interesting. And then John was talking about, uh, you know, just like uh, this uh, stage harvesting. So, uh, you know, just this information could be uh, of uh, relevance uh, um, to in, in incorporate in your harvesting practices. So, um, John was talking about uh, you know, just a good uh, uh, uniformity within uh, his uh, uh, rows. And this is what we found in, uh, when we are testing uh, CBD and THC levels in uh, you know, just a population. In this particular case, and we have data for, for uh, you know, just, uh, all these three varieties. Here I'm sh showcasing uh, uh, um, X59. See, different plants within the same population, they vary. Uh, in the terms of CBD, between almost 4% to 0.5%. Uh, uh, um, uh, so uh, we are discussing with John implications this for, for, for breeding of, uh, and developing uh, varieties uh, for uh, you know, enhanced levels of CBD. So let me conclude this first project. So as I said, a great uh, um, CBD content uh, in, in plants uh, vary and uh, in uh, X59 was 0.36 uh, 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 to uh, almost 4% uh, uh, position uh, of the bat on the same plant uh, matters in terms of uh, uh, CBD as I pointed out. Plants grown at lower density had better grow higher yield and higher CBD uh, uh, levels than uh, um, densely uh, uh, grown. Uh, photo period uh, plays uh, um, you know, just important role in uh, uh, both uh, bad, of course, uh, uh, development and uh, CBD uh, levels. Uh, supply of uh, potassium uh, mm, at the gen uh, mm, uh, 
uh, the <laughs> seed setting stage uh, can increase bad uh, yield and CBD content. And I also mentioned water stress. Unfortunately, uh, we got uh, the data uh, were, uh, were, uh, because we, we didn't have very many plants, so uh, they were um, all over the place. However, uh, um, you know, just like uh, uh, as I mentioned before, we will be studying in the, the upcoming growing season. This date, uh, this uh, uh, project encouraged us, or re outcomes of this project, project encouraged us uh, to do uh, um, in-depth studies of environmental factors of different hemp varieties grown under field conditions. And as, as I said, I have uh, uh, in-house uh, analytical uh, accredited laboratory, so we can do. Uh, all this uh, um, analysis, uh, uh, you know, just in-house at uh, low cost. So quickly, second second project. Uh, that's what Kim was uh, uh, talking about. I committed uh, uh, in uh, early uh, early uh, um, summer uh, to uh, test uh, um, 13 varieties that we had in our uh, variety trials. Test towards uh, uh, um, cannabinoids. Here you have a list of uh, varieties grown at the Vegerville site. Uh, we uh, test, uh, we uh, sampled flowers and, and, and seed heads at six dates, uh, starting in uh, July and ending uh, in October. Uh, I put asterisks on um, at uh, August 16. Uh, day, sampling date because we have always summer students and this. Uh, Summer student didn't perform, so we pretty much lost uh, August 16. Uh, it happens. Those who have summer students, uh, they uh, know uh, that it happens. But again, <laughs> sounds familiar, eh? So, uh, and again, these is uh, the first. Uh, John uh, uh, presented data for, for multiple years. This is the, the, the first, first uh, year, and uh, we pledge to continue this, uh, this research and this, uh, this analysis. So as I said, we tested uh, CBD, CBN, CBG, uh, and THC. We didn't test BBC and CNN. Uh, you didn't get this, okay. <laughs> okay, no, it was in French. So, uh, okay, so... Uh, uh, July 20th, and again, you see the, the, the you know, just like a 13 varieties, and July uh, 20th, they, they were at, uh, as you can imagine, because we have a battery, uh, you know, just like a, a varieties of different maturities, uh, including phenola, pheromone, silesia, so early and late maturing, we have moon issues, day issues, uh, we have uh, grain type, uh, uh, dual purpose, you name it. So uh, July 20th, I uh, echo what uh, John has said, you know, just like uh, CBD uh, levels uh, were pretty much between 0 0.25, 0 0.3, uh, very low and variability among these varieties uh, uh, were uh, pretty, you know, just negligible. And you can see that the pictures uh, below uh, uh, illustrate stage of, uh, of uh, an hemp uh, at the sampling date. You can see my hand out there. So, oh, good. Uh, August 2nd, we started seeing some, uh, some differences uh, among the, uh, the tested varieties. Uh, so, uh, uh, CFX2, uh, you know, just started uh, approaching 1%. Same with Finola and Piccolo. Uh, you, you notice that Kanda, uh, Joey, they were very low. And, and if you remember uh, Eastern uh, Canada data jo John presented seconds ago, uh, Kanda was also, uh, you know, just like a, uh, one of the lowest uh, among uh, varieties that he tested. Okay, so we are skipping uh, August 16th. However, let's get to August 31st. So at seed matur uh, maturing and, and uh, early harvest. What we are seeing in here, look at Katani, oh boy, oh boy. And we got some, uh, some uh, samples that exceeded 4% in Katani. So uh, in, in, uh, in general, uh, on August 31st, so again, I echo what John uh, has said, that uh, you know, just like early harvest uh, uh, for, for CBD uh, doesn't make any, uh, well, doesn't make sense in, in my mind. Uh, and you, you are seeing that uh, we are having uh, very many varieties tested in here exceeded uh, uh, 2%. And uh, we are seeing that, uh, you know, just uh, only uh, 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 four or five 
uh, we're at the 1.5% mark. Still, it is 1.5% uh, in a, a, a crop on August 31st. So uh, harvest, September 16th. Uh, you might notice overall that uh, uh, levels are slightly dropping, going down uh, to this, uh, uh, in the uh, uh, top performers around this 2% level. And here I have to make a comment. This picture is uh, uh, pr provided by Will, and this is his combine uh, harvesting uh, our Silesia. October, uh, October 19th, yes indeed, we got lots of snow in Alberta in the first part of October, so uh, we had some, our variety trial still standing, and uh, we managed to, uh, uh, to test it. Look, we are still having this, this awfully long and nobody uh, growing for, for grain wouldn't do it, but I did it for, for curiosity. So what is happening? Uh, to uh, uh, if you if you have uh, you know just like a conditions as we had this this uh, uh, fall in Alberta we are still getting in this neighborhood in some varieties we are still getting two percent of uh, CBD and this is the one one more comment about this picture uh, uh, Stefano uh, who who else Jace I not always wear a suit and a tie as is uh, documented on, on this picture. Because very many people were just making fun of my attire, business attire. <laughs> okay, so let's summarize this dynamics of, of uh, CBD content. This is like a, I was showing you a, a, a bar graphs. Here is uh, just like a, a um, you know, a summary of what we have found. Uh, you know, just as I said, pick of the uh, of CBD uh, in the 13 varieties. In majority of them. Uh, happened around the, in the end of August. Uh, some of them uh, retained as fairly uh, high levels of, uh, of CBD uh, until, you know, just like a uh, awfully delayed harvest. And some of them, including uh, 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 um, uh, monitious or fiber type varieties, uh, surprisingly late uh, maturing varieties like, uh, uh, like uh, Silesia, like Kanda, and we also got, uh, what was that, uh, Joey, or Dolores, sorry, just like uh, levels uh, um, towards the end of vegetation were, were uh, dramatically reduced. We also uh, calculated, and this is like a very rough calculation of uh, CBD yields. So based on, uh, based on uh, yield of, uh, uh, or content of CBD and yield of, uh, of uh, above ground biomass, again, uh, what I'm trying to say that sometimes you are getting uh, varieties that have higher levels of CBD, however they produce uh, less buds or less above ground biomass. So uh, this theoretical uh, yields of CBD vary dramatically as presented uh, on this slide. Next year we will be doing uh, 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 very detailed studies uh, you know, just like removing all uh, leafage and all uh, you know, just like a, a, a flower and seed hats to uh, provide some uh, um, hard numbers on the uh, CBD yields. Okay, so as I mentioned, we also did uh, uh, CBG and uh, CBN, and uh, not all varieties, you, you might notice that here I'm uh, listing only seven varieties, because not all of them had this uh, uh, um, less uh, popular and abandoned uh, um, cannabinoids. Uh, uh, for CBN, uh, pick of uh, the, the content picked around the, this uh, end of August. So, uh, <laughs> these data are uh, um, available for you to, uh, to examine. So, I quickly conclude that the substantial differences uh, found among the varieties differ in dynamics of uh, uh, cannabinoid changes. So, be careful uh, when you're harvesting. Uh, uh, and the study, as I mentioned several times, it was like a impulsive uh, research uh, prompted by Kim, so blame on her. And we will continue the, uh, this and we'll just, uh, we'll be studying impacts of weather factors. We got very wet, uh, low uh, uh, growing de uh, degrees uh, uh, um, days d d this year. Uh, I mentioned several times fertility levers, moon issues and die issues, uh, and, and you name it. So with that, I want to thank you.